Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and last week I made lick -a tongue and Jesse, so this week I figured I'd make Victory Bell and James. Or at least that was my original plan, instead I ended up making the entire evolutionary line and I turned it into a horrifying garden. Now naturally, if I'm going to be making the entire evolutionary line, then I really ought to start at the bottom and work my way up. So first thing, we'll be making a bell sprout. I'll start with a little ball of clay that I can then roll into a slightly wonky egg, which I can then poke a little hole into the middle of, and using some ball styluses, I can start to weird it up. My intention with this current run of Pokemon is to make them somewhat realistic. I have, however, though, sort of stumbled into associating realistic with horrifying, so there's every possibility that what should be a kind of cute little flower will end up looking like a gnarly testicle with teeth. I don't take full responsibility for this though since once you start putting eyeballs on plants you're setting the bar pretty low. Otherwise at this point I've got my oddly textured testicle of a weeping bell baked and ready to have a wound wire jammed into its backside. The wire will be the bell sprout's body and I'll use the excess wire as little arms to support the future leaves. I'll then unwind the wire to make the legs then rewrap the whole body with some finer wire to build up the texture a bit before coating the entire thing in a thick layer of bacon bond. Bacon bond is basically just liquid clay that can be applied with a brush and cured in the oven. Otherwise that's Bellsprout's body done so it's time to make some arms. I've rolled out an extra thin sheet of clay that I'll slap onto a bit of plastic wrap then using some bendy knives I can cut out a couple of leaves. The plastic wrap prevents the clay from sticking to my desktop so once I've applied a little bit of texture, I can then peel them off and add them to my bell sprout. I'll then add a bit more texture once the leaves are attached, and that's my bell sprout done so I can move on to the next evolution, Weeping Bell. Weeping Bell is, as far as I'm concerned, both a perfect and terrible evolution. It's perfect since it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect as the evolutionary in-between of bell sprout and victory bell, but it's terrible in that it is, I think, one of the ugliest Pokemon that was ever made. I know beauty is subjective, but in Weeping Bell's case, it's an indisputable fact that he's a real uggo. But he does have those big beautiful eyes that you can get lost in, and I'm gonna make them the focus point. I'll start by wrapping his big ol' peepers in little wormy dealies, then pressing them back to really exaggerate their size. Then using some varying sizes of styluses, I'll roll some wrinkles away from the eyes to create a sort of wrinkly, veiny look leading towards them. This way, Weeping Bell's eyes are raised up on gnarly, veiny pedestals to be admired by all. Now to add some unsettling texture to its body, I'm gonna wrap Weeping Bell in a layer of scrunched up cling film, then gently roll it onto the surface. This will both remove some of the fingerprints from holding it, while also imparting some of the texture onto the surface, leaving me with a pretty gross looking end result. I'm going to be giving Victory Bell a whole bunch of teeth, and seeing as this is the pre-evolution, it makes sense to at least partly fill Weeping Bell's mouth with a set of pre-baked pointy teeth as well. I'll then add a little bit more texture to the mouth orifice, then it's into the oven to bake before adding a little blob on top into which I can stick his little wooden stinger. I wanted to make Weeping Bell's leaves supporting his body, so to help hold the weight, I'll stick a length of folded wire into its underside, then bend them out into appropriately leafy positions. Then I can drop some larger leaves on top of the wires, add some texture on top, and fold them in such a way that they look like little leafy legs. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for Weeping Bell, which means I can finally get to work on the star of the show, Victory Bell. It'll start out as a lump of aluminium that gets wrapped in a thin layer of clay that then gets a big lump stuck on top. I'll then squish and shape this into an extra stubby elephant trunk before hollowing it out for future teeth and possibly an unfortunate trainer. Now since Victory Bell is mostly mouth, I want to take a little extra time to make his mouth nice and gnarly looking. I'll start by smoothing the surface and getting the general shape of the outside, then I can build up the inside a bit by adding little lumps of clay here and there, before blending it all together and adding a cornucopia of teeth. Once the teeth are in place, I can give the whole body a little pre-texture texturing, then stab some holes for a pair of little peepers. 
I'll build up the area around the eyes until they're looking appropriately angry, then I can get to work giving the whole body a bit of cling film texturing, this time working with the sharp edge of my sculpting tool to add some deeper wrinkles and cuts. Otherwise, with my gonad looking adequately wrinkled and scarred, I can toss it in the oven to bake before drilling a set of holes for leaves and vines. Once the wires are in place, I can wrap the big viney bit in the back with an extra long wormy dealy of clay, give it a bit of a wonky roller texture, then wrap it in a bunch of smaller vines. I can then come back with some small ball styluses to poke and prod it until the vines look a little less smooth and a little bit more natural. I'll then wrap the tip of the scorpion tail in a bit of wire for future support, then I can add some bog standard leaves to the sides and the teeny tiny tail on the bottom. Finally, I can add the top leaf onto the tip of the tail and apply a touch of texture and finish it off. Otherwise, that's the victory bell finished, which means we are done with the sculpting and ready to get on to the painting. Sort of. I realized my garden was a bit barren, so I went ahead and made a bunch of bell sprouts and an extra weeping bell. However, with those, we're finally done and ready to give everything a nice white primer. Now, since all three evolutions share a general color scheme, I'm going to do the majority of the painting moving back and forth between models, rather than finishing one and moving on to the next. I'll start by base coating the bell part of each of the plants in a yellow before applying a reddish wash to the middle of the mouths, blending it into the yellow for a nice mouth-to-face fade. Because I've made these models out of cosplay, I can easily bend Victory Bell's back vine out of the way so that I can get into all the hard-to-reach nooks and crannies. Once the red wash is dried, I can dab the lips with a series of pinks, purples, and reds until I've got a nice fleshy look. Then it's onto the leaves which, in a shocking twist, get a thick green base coat. While the leaves are drying, I can hit the sticky parts with a couple coats of brown to make them look like sticks, before moving back to my leaves to give them a dark green wash, followed by a series of progressively lighter green dry brushes. Now that the brown bits have dried, I can give them a lighter brown dry brush before moving on to painting all the eyes and teeth white. Once each of the eyes has had a couple coats of white, I can give them some dark black dots in the center, followed by tiny white dots for details. Victory Bell and Weeping Bell have a few little green spots which I'll make by adding very thin, very watery green blobs, then drying them with my heat gun. This will cause the edges to dry darker, leaving me with some fancy little green stains. Finally, to give the eyes a bit of life, I'll coat them in a thin layer of UV resin. Otherwise, that's the color added, which means all I need to do is make a garden. And to make my garden, I need to make some nice wooden fences, which naturally I'll make out of foam. I'll start by cutting some ruler width lengths of foam out, then splitting them in half by hand until I've got a set of eight wonky foam planks. I'll then cut four of these in half again to give me shorter sides before using the flat of my sculpting tool to soften the edges and a teeny tiny ball stylus to carve lots of exaggerated wooden grain onto the surface. A combination of brown paint and Mod Podge will help to protect the foam as well as lay down a nice bright brown base coat, which gets followed by a darker brown mahogany top coat. Finally, the barest baby's fart of brown dry brush on the edges to bring out the details, and I can start sticking my sticks together. I've made some teeny tiny planks to attach to the larger lengths, and a couple dots of foam safe super glue will hold them in place. I've cut out a piece of slightly thicker foam that I hope fits the fence pieces and painted it black. However, before I attach the fence, I need to make some mud. When it comes to making mud, I like to start with hole filler, add some dirt, detritus, and then some brown paint. I'll start by finding a mixing cup that's too small, then filling it to the brim with too much hole filler, so that when I add my brown paint on top, I can barely mix it together. Then I'll start adding dirt and detritus on top, making sure to spill lots of it onto my tabletop while mixing. 
This haphazard creation can then get slapped onto my base until the whole surface is covered, at which point I'm ready to stick the back and sides of my fence in place. Then I can stick my various variation of bells in place until I've got a garden plot full of ugly yellow Pokemon. I'll then stick the front fence in place, fold Victory Bell's vine tail out of the way, and add some much needed gloss varnish to the mouth to make it extra goopy. I also made a tiny Don't Feed the Plants sign off camera, as well as a pair of little black boots that I can fit into Victory Bell's mouth. Finally, with the boots in place, I'll add some extra goopy bits of saliva using Uhu clear glue, and a bit of wood will help me string some gnarly saliva strands between the teeth and the boots. Last but not least, I'll fold the top leaf down, add some more drooly bits of glue between the underside and the lips, and well, that's us done and on to the glamour shots. As always, a massive thank you to the fine folk over on Patreon who continue to support this channel, and a big old hey how are you to my newest patrons, Anthony J. Wilson, Aaron C. Howe, Stacy Belair, Chris Grissetto, Andreas Bohr, Nikki FTW, Bastion Archer, Stephen Clapton, Dolphin Yeah, Nyla Griffin, Henry Harkreader, Blep Blep 69, Mr. Cole Number One Fan, Liz Solomon, Nicholas Bailey, Why So Curious, Demon Girl 16, Wesley Wilson, Vaffler Slash Deeg, Court, Erica Wood, and Katie Johnson. You are the freshly mixed whole filler and paint topsoil into which this man eating plant of a channel grows. If you like this video, then don't forget to like that smash and button that hit notification. Otherwise, we'll um, see you next time. Cheers.